Good morning everyone, today I'm going to be filming my 2020 beauty favourites and I'm going to be talking through my absolute favourite makeup and skincare from the whole year. I didn't do one of these videos last year because I just felt like you know, with having a new baby, I felt like I hadn't used much stuff and I just didn't feel like I had anything interesting to share with the internet. But actually when I look back at the last time I did one of these yearly beauty roundup videos, my favorite products have changed so much. So I thought this would be really interesting for you guys. If you just wanna know like the best of the best, my absolute favorite products, this is the video to watch. I think we should start with makeup. So let me take you into my bedroom. Okay, so let's start with makeup and I'm gonna talk you through the products in the order I would put them on my face starting with a primer and I don't tend to use a primer for the purpose of making my makeup last longer I don't really like wear makeup for that long I don't have long days in an office or I don't really do like photo shoots or anything like that so the primers I go for are more to do with making my skin look glowy I have slightly more of like dry dehydrated skin so to combat that dry skin look I'm all about the glowy primer I've got two to talk to you about I couldn't pick one the first one is the Elemis superfood glow priming moisturizer this feels more like a moisturizer but it's got this kind of pearly glow to it it smooths like very easily around the skin it feels really hydrating on it feels somewhere between like a moisturizer and a primer i really really love this it just it feels like it's made by a skincare brand but i kind of class it as makeup so that is really really fab and then the other one is the glossier future dew which i would use slightly differently i think if you're not that into makeup and you're a bit intimidated by it go for the elemis it's a much less intimidating product but the Glossier one is fab, I absolutely love it. It's very, very glowy, but in almost kind of like a sticky glass skin kind of way. And because of that, I find this harder to smooth around the face. So I wouldn't apply this with my hands like all over my face. I would probably mix this in with my foundation and almost just like apply a little bit to the brush, apply a little bit of the foundation and then just mix it in together. And it really just adds a gorgeous kind of shiny glow, not for anyone with oily skin, but if you've got dry skin, it's great. And this also doubles up as a highlighter for me. I haven't got a highlighter to show you today because I don't tend to wear like kind of powdery highlighters anymore. I would just take a little bit of this onto my finger and just tap it onto my cheekbones. I can show you now actually, because I haven't done any today, but I would literally just tap it like that and just press it into the skin. And you'll see, it just makes your skin look like juicy and healthy and glowy and hydrated. Oh, I love it. Love Love the smell, love everything about it. Pretty sure this is my second bottle. Highly, highly recommend that. On to foundation. I think the foundation that I've used most this year has been the Giorgio Armani Neo Nude. I saw a lot of people recommending this. A lot of people did work with Armani this year on this foundation and it's a really nice one. It's definitely a foundation I would recommend to friends. And I say that because most of my friends don't really wear foundation. Often they'll say, do you have a tinted moisturizer recommendation? And this is great. It's quite similar to the Laura Mercier tinted moisturizer, but it's just got a bit more coverage. It feels like a bit more like worth the effort. I would apply this with a buffing brush. I've got two shades here, four and 4.5. I'm kind of in between, so I tend to mix. It's just a kind of medium coverage. It doesn't sit on top of the skin. It doesn't look obvious when you're wearing it. I'm wearing it now. It lets your like natural skin and any kind of beauty spots or anything kind of show through. You can build it up a bit. And it's just a perfect like everyday foundation. So I would say this is what I've been wearing most this year. Also just love the very kind of easy packaging. Concealer wise, I've been using the Shiseido Gel Concealer. I did love the Bare Minerals one. I'm really hoping they extend the shade range, but this is a great alternative for something that's very lightweight. Like this is great for under the eyes because it doesn't cake or like sit in your like wrinkles at all. I like to apply it and then just press it in with my fingers and then you can barely see it on the skin. Again, this is what I would recommend to friends. It's like a very easy to use concealer. I don't find that it works amazingly on spots though. And when I need a bit more coverage from a concealer, I use the NARS Soft Matte cream concealer. I don't really know what shade I am. I'm kind of a mix. At the moment I'm using nougatine, which is a bit more kind of yellowy. But again, I use my finger. I always use my finger for concealer these days. I just find that it blends into the skin so much nicer because the warmth of your finger just kind of like 
pressing it into the skin. So these two have been great. The NARS one is a bit more of a cream that takes a little bit more effort to blend in and the Shiseido one is a much more kind of lighter gel cream consistency. This one probably wouldn't last all day if you needed it to, but for like a mum makeup routine, this is perfect. Pause for a moment. Let me know how you guys feel about monthly favourites videos because I stopped doing them for ages. I just felt like I didn't have that much to talk about. I wasn't sure if they were getting a bit boring. I'm not sure how much I love watching other people's videos but I do feel like there's a gap missing in my content where I used to do those monthly favorites and I I do enjoy filming them and I felt like it was a good place to talk to you guys about things that I've been enjoying so let me know if you still enjoy watching them do you want me to continue in 2021 doing monthly favorites videos do you want me to do something else that's like similar I would just love to know your thoughts please let me know powder I don't tend to use powder that often unless I'm filming a video or I'm going on a shoot or I for some reason need my makeup to last the whole day and I just have one powder that I would recommend, the only one that I own and it's the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder. I just love it because you can barely see it on the skin. I just literally use like a tiny brush, like a fluffy brush like that, can you see? And I would just press it into the areas where I need to set my makeup, so under my eyes, around my nose and probably on my chin or any spots. It's a very lightweight, beautiful powder, would really recommend that. It's funny because when I said I was doing this video, everyone was like, makeup? What's makeup? Who's been wearing makeup this year? But I have. Maybe to some of you guys, working from home is like a new concept this year. But for me, I've always worked from home and I love getting dressed and doing my makeup and doing my hair. Not every day, but it does make me feel like I'm gonna have a more productive day. Cream bronzer wise, this year I switched from the Chanel cream bronzer and this came highly recommended from so many people as a great alternative. It comes in such a good shade range and I've totally fallen in love with it. I definitely prefer it to the Chanel and I love that it's not as like highly fragranced as the Chanel one as well. It's from Fenty Beauty and it's the cream bronzer in Butter Biscuit, shade number two. Look, I've almost finished. I will. 100% be repurchasing this. I can't believe how much I've used of it. It's just been such a great discovery for me this year. It's a really creamy bronzer. I use like a big brush like this and just swirl it around. It did make my brush go green when I washed it, which is weird. But I just swirl my brush around and you can see I'm wearing it today. It gives me like a really proper bronze, like a little bit more than the Chanel did, but it just blends in beautifully with the skin, looks quite natural. Again, I love cream products, like almost all my products are cream because I think if you've got slightly drier skin, the older you get, powder just tends to sit on the skin. So if you're wanting kind of healthy, juicy, glowy skin, go for the cream products. I absolutely love them. So that has been such a good bronzer. And for blusher, I love blusher. Whenever I forget to put it on, I just feel like something's missing. It just, for me, like, gives a bit of like a 3D effect to your face and just lifts your makeup. The one I've been using the most this year by far is from Nude Sticks. They do these really great cream blushes and bronzers actually. It's double sided and I, I have to say I never ever use the brush on the end of this. It's just way too like dense for me. But I do like that the blush is in a stick form because I literally just wind it up and I tend to just kind of dot on each cheek. Oh, I kind of pressed a bit there. And then just blend it in either with my finger or with like a little small brush like that. And this is the shade Salty Siren, which I think came in Estee's like makeup edit. It's a lovely, almost kind of corally pink color. Very natural and yeah, I love that so much. I'm gonna say I love that about every product. <laughs> Let's move on to eyebrows. I don't have the product with me because I finished it and I haven't repurchased one yet, but my most used this year has probably been the Anastasia Brow Wiz. But to be honest, I'm not that fussy. Oh my God, my brows are so bad at the moment. I need them threaded like immediately. But I tend to just use any product like that. Those are my favorite eyebrow products. The ones that have a spoolie on one end, which I kind of sometimes use, sometimes I don't. And then just a thin pencil. I don't want a big chunky pencil because then I tend to overdraw them. These are just perfect because all I do for my brows is I just fill in the front and then I fill in the arch. This one is the NARS Brow Perfector. Like I said, I like the Anastasia Brow Wiz and I also like the Benefit Precisely My Brow 
although I find the packaging is a bit like garish but I'm not fussy as long as the shade isn't too warm or too cool it's just like a neutral brown it works for me after I use the pencil on my brows I tend to use a clear brow gel this one's from blink brow bar they've recently changed it to a clear brow gloss and it's slightly different the brush is like much smaller than it was before actually I used it this morning so my brows are kind of set in place it it does set them in place but it doesn't like leave any white bits in them it doesn't make them too crispy it just does what it needs to do and I did try the Fenty kind of more wax products which I really like as well but this one just slightly kind of beat it to the top spot eyeshadow wise the ones I've been wearing the most this year they're so boring sorry guys this is the most boring like choice for an eyeshadow but it's just genuinely what I wear the most MAC uninterrupted which I'm so gutted they've discontinued but they do have in stock on John Lewis is like return of the greats or something like that and on ASOS they've got it as well but it is discontinued luckily I think it's a color you could probably easily find elsewhere because it's nothing like revolutionary but it's a warm brown tan color and it's just perfect and wearing it today it's like slightly more than just like an everyday eyeshadow because it's like slightly darker but this is just my absolute fave and I think if I want something a little bit more toned down and everyday I would use MAC Groundwork which is one of their paint pots so it's cream you can use your finger or a brush and just blend it all over the lid and this is slightly different because uninterrupted is a bit more is it a matte yeah it's a matte so it comes out a bit like heavier whereas groundwork is well it's a paint pot so it's creamy and it's got like a slight sheen to it and it's a bit more subtle i can't believe that my two most used eye products are from mac because i don't have that many like products from mac anymore but these just are the best i've also absolutely been loving the Giorgio Armani um, liquid eyeshadow but it's a bit more of a recent favorite so I feel like these two needed to get like the main mentions because I've been using them the most. Eyeliner wise I don't have anything to show you because Grey lost it and I'm gutted and I need to buy myself another one but it's the Charlotte Tilbury liquid eyeliner in brown. I've got so many brown coal liners and I love them and they all work great but I feel like with coal you get a slightly more thicker line whereas with a liquid eyeliner I felt like I could get a really kind of just very subtle thin line just on the top of my lash line just on the edges and it did the trick it just made my lashes look a little bit fuller it made my eye makeup look a little bit more finished and put together but because it's liquid it doesn't smudge it lasts all day and I love brown liquid liner I used to always wear black but brown just suits my complexion so much more and it looks really nice I would really recommend trying it I love the Charlotte Tilbury one mascara wise you guys know like I'm a little bit uncommitted is that the word I like to just try new mascaras and I don't tend to like repurchase a mascara so the ones I've been using the most this year are probably from Urban Decay um I've really been enjoying the Urban Decay perversion mascara bigger blacker badder so this is like a big fluffy brush these are the ones I tend to go for the most and that's what I'm wearing today um but I've also been enjoying their Lash Freak one which is a slightly kind of longer plasticky brush quite different I think I'd probably use this one for a more daytime relaxed lash look I find that the plastic brushes tend to define my lashes more whereas the big fat brushes tend to kind of make my lashes bigger and fluffier but I feel like I can't really recommend mascara because I know I've got quite long curly lashes they have thinned out a bit since having a baby but they're pretty easy lashes so most mascaras work for me lips wise my two favorites have been the nars afterglow lip balm i've just wanted lipstick that i can just are you joking what is that a leaf blower what are you doing guys i'm sorry if you can hear that very annoying some kind of like drain issue going on outside let's wrap up this makeup a bit quickly the nars afterglow lip balm i've wanted products that i can just apply without mirror and it gives me like a nice sheen of color and it's not too heavy and I can give Grey big kisses on the cheek and it's not gonna like transfer a massive lip lipstick mark onto her. So I love the Afterglow, oh my God, Grey has just destroyed this. Afterglow lip balm in Fast Lane. Really, really gorgeous. Actually, I'm gonna put some on now. Kind of like a pink lip balm. But then I've also been enjoying, if I want something a bit more lipsticky, just the Chanel lipstick. This is the Rouge Coco Flash 
so it's like slightly glossy in boy this is just a really easy nude it's almost just like my lips but better but this is just a gorgeous lipstick i really really love this one a slight sheen to it but nothing too like it's just it looks natural you know but a new addition i've only used this recently so i feel weird adding it to this video but i think i'm in love with the victoria beckham lipsticks they're so nice i mean obviously the packaging it's like this gorgeous like tortoise shell and it's like weighty this is the shade pout and there are two other shades that i want to get my hands on to try because this one's like slightly pinky this is what i was wearing just before i applied the nars they're so nice sheeny moisturizing they feel really like light on the lips do you know what i think this is going to become like a proper favorite of mine so i just wanted to like slip that in there okay let's go in the bathroom where hopefully there's less drilling and i can show you my skincare favorites okay we are in the bathroom and i'm going to talk you through my skincare favorites from the year my skin has been a little bit crazy this year a mix of like not being on the pill having to wear masks quite a lot i've had some like really spotty times and i'm not used to having skin like that so it's been a huge like learning curve for me to just maybe tone things down a bit with the skincare but i guess also with my eczema like i need to just chill which is tricky when i've got so many lovely products that i want to try let's start with cleanser let me just grab things and show you obviously it's gonna have to be my clinique take the day off cleansing balm this is just so great for removing makeup if you've never tried a balm cleanser before you just scoop a bit out with your finger kind of warm it up a bit in your hands or in your face it turns into an oil and then it just removes your makeup so well then you can just use like a muslin cloth which kind of helps give a bit of exfoliation you just put a bit of warm water nothing too hot Woo! south facing bathroom <laughs> okay i've had to move to this side of the bathroom i've waited for ages but the sun is not chilling out so i was just finishing up saying that clinique take the day off balm is the best cleanser for removing makeup in my opinion but a close second is the kate somerville delicate soothing cleanser i wouldn't use this so much as a makeup remover but more just as a cleanser for my skin and it's so gentle it's so great if you've got sensitive skin like i do it's not like a balm or an oil it's a creamy cleanser so it feels very nourishing and hydrating on the skin serums i think my most used serum this year is the elemis superfood seeker calm hydration juice i've almost finished finished it up it's very very hydrating calming it almost feels like you're putting aloe vera on your skin it's very cooling that's the word i was thinking of which has been great when my skin has felt eczema or spotty it's just really really lovely to use definitely for me like morning serum but feels juicy juicy is the word makes your skin feel juicy close second for a hydrating serum would be the SkinCeuticals ha intensifier this must be like the fifth or sixth bottle i've gone through it's such a great serum it just helps to amplify the skin's own hyaluronic acid levels so hyaluronic acid helps with the hydration like plumpness of your skin the elemis is quite a cooling feeling this is quite a gloopy serum which i really like i also wanted to give a quick mention to the inky list hyaluronic acid i've almost finished this just because it's such a bargain like it's such a good price for a very basic hyaluronic acid but it does what it says on the tin so if you're wanting to try hyaluronic acid which is so great for hydration i use it morning and night without fail it's a very tiny little bottle but it really is just a very simple hyaluronic acid that does what you want it to do so i wanted to give that a mention it's very accessible in terms of spotty skin there are two products that i've really been enjoying this year the first one are the hydro stars by Starface. These are the little stickers that I just pop on a spot when I feel one brewing or when it's feeling a little bit sore. The little star stickers you put on and I find that it really, really chills out the spot. The second product is from Allies of Skin and on my second tube of this, it's the Promise Keeper Blemish Sleeping Facial. This is just so great when my skin is feeling spotty. It's been a bit difficult i just literally cleanse my skin in the evening and then i put this on and sleep with it on and wash it off the next morning and it's massively improved my skin like so much i've seen a real difference i find with skincare sometimes it's hard to see if things are working or not but this is one of those products that i can really see like makes a massive difference to my skin thank you anna for that recommendation moisturizer i haven't got one to show you because i finished it and i haven't repurchased it but the one i used the most and really enjoyed this year was just the aven moisturizer 
moisturizer. I think it was the rich one. I was recommended by a dermatologist to use it when my eczema was flaring up and it really helped. It's a very good basic moisturizer that I would recommend anyone tries. In terms of SPF, I don't love using a moisturizer that has SPF in it because then I feel like on days where I'm not going out, I'd rather just have a moisturizer I can use every day. And then on the days where I need SPF, if I'm leaving the house or it's a slightly brighter day, I prefer to then apply my SPF before my makeup. I did a job with Pi on their SPF, which I do really like, but it doesn't work for every skin tone. It can, it does have a slight kind of pasty, milky color to it. So the one I want to recommend, because I absolutely love this one, is the Bondi Sands SPF 50 Fragrance Free. So I love this because it's fragrance free, and it has no color at all. It just blends like beautifully. Is this gonna work now I've said that? It starts off with a color, but as you blend it in, it totally disappears and it blends in really easily. And it feels lightweight on the skin. You know how some SPFs are quite heavy and creamy? It doesn't have that feeling at all. This is just great. I feel like I used to have like holiday sun creams and then like London sun creams, whereas I feel like this would work for both. Okay, one more product, a retinol, which I feel like is the only skincare product that's actually gonna help my skin. I say from aging, I want my skin to age, it's gonna age, but like age well. So I really wanted to try retinol. I was quite nervous because my skin is sensitive and the one I was recommended for sensitive skin, the one that isn't gonna make my skin start like peeling or do anything drastic is the Jordan Samuel Retinol Treatment Oil. I love Jordan Samuel's products. He's got some really great serums. It's really nice to try retinol in an oil formula. I don't really use any other types of oils because sometimes I find that they're a bit heavy, but for retinol, I find it really nice and very gentle and I'll just use this in the evening and it hasn't made my skin react or anything. I haven't seen any like, drastic changes, but I like that I can just add this into my routine like once or twice a week. Okay, let's get out of the bathroom. I feel like it's very echoey. Okay, I totally forgot to finish this video. Sorry, my bad. I've never done that before, but I'm here to say that is the end of my 2020 makeup and skincare favorites. I really hope you guys found that helpful. All the products I mentioned will be linked down below in the description box. So have an amazing new year and I'll see you guys in 20. 21 for hopefully a much better year for everyone. See you then. Bye.